Hello, Ben here from Supercoach Insider. I am straight in. Babies are in bed. I've got a draft coming up. Let me share my screen and let's go share, share, share. Yes, please. I'm on the clock in 20 seconds. So this was real quick. I'm giving you a quick insight here. I've got my pen. I've got my stuff ready. I've got to keep an eye out on what's going on. I've got pick number one, which is a little bit crazy. We are playing captains in this draft league. So Bontempelli kind of has to go number one, but I do like defenders. It's 12 teams. I am on the clock. Oh, it's hard to pass up even with five deep. Bontempelli number one would be great. Nick Dacos isn't going to last long as a defender. He's probably a really good option as well. So that's kind of where I'm sitting at the moment. I don't have long. 45 seconds. I've got my little team picker sheet here. They probably think I'm timing out. So I'm just going to buy this time. I've got my positions as well, each and every single position lined up so that way I can actually cross them off as we go. And um, sorry, guys, I'm just trying to buy this time because I am in here. Um, I don't know if we're actually going to play this league, so I do like Nick Dacos as a rule of thumb. Bontepelli is a great captain option because you can pick up more points. However, there are a lot of midfielders, and there's not that many great forwards, and there's probably not that many great defenders either. There's 12 I've got pick one. So by the time it comes back, I actually don't really like my chances of getting a good player in the defensive line or forward line. So I'm going to go Nick Dacos for number one. Now, that's a bit strange. They're going to be thrown off by this. I guarantee it. Um, and the reason probably is because um, they're definitely not going to be expecting that. So I've gone number one. So I'm pick one. I'm actually going to tick off these positions as they go through. Team English is number two. All right, so I can tick off number whoever's on second, and then it's Bonson Pelly. So that makes a lot of sense. Again, if I had a pick in the middle, I would love to pick someone else. Petrarca following suit after that as well. And I'm just ticking off the positions as well as the players. So Bont's gone, Petrarca's gone, um, English is gone, Dacos is gone. So that's pretty much where we are at Dacos. Now, normally, like Nolivar, someone's gone early. All right. Clayton Oliver, so Petrarca, Oliver, and I'll try and summarize this the best I can because the first rounds go a bit quicker and English is gone. So I want to see what I can get on the way back. Maybe a Gorn survives. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens on the way back. So the issue was is that I could go Bontempelli, but I'd easily like to think I might be able to pick up a Walsh or a Sarong coming home, and then I use those two picks to sort of see what I can get. Whereas if I go with a Bont, which I love, Chances are like Stewart's gone, Dacos gone, and all of a sudden I'm then forced to kind of pick another couple of mids or go forward. So that's why I quite like going with a little bit less field because I can still get a good v, like a good captain option anyway, I think, uh, which is kind of where we're sitting. So looks like there's a little bit of a pause there, so it's good. We've got six seconds for someone to decide. And Marshall, he's gone for the rocky, rocky, rocky. Marshall. So here's why I check these ones here. Butters, someone's gone early on, Butters, mid. So I actually try and track. I have my own spreadsheet split by position, so I'm going to put mids on this. I'm a little bit unorganized, but um, the good thing with it is, though, is that I actually go through and I list up all my positions on my own spreadsheet, mainly because on Supercoach you only get a minute, and it's hard to flick and scroll and try and have something when someone else picks a player you're after which means that you really do have to try and take what you can get. And this is Rux. So I'll see if I can give you a better, bit of a better look here. Oh, Max Gorn's gone. That's fair, nice and early. But Rux are the other one. With 12 teams, look, I'm happy to pick up a Ruck later if I missed out on those early ones. English I did like, but again, I could easily pick up a Ruck, I think, picking up 90 or so on the way back. So we'll see what's left for me. So I don't mind like a Grundy, a Darcy, a Wits, a Briggs. I think there's a lot of value still be to had. And I think there'll be a round, like uh, a bit of an issue here. So Max Gorn is gone and Marshall's gone. So that means three rucks are gone. So what I actually do is I have a list that looks like this, right? And you might be able to kind of see some of it. So what I do is I actually track all the positions that they're going. And the reason being is, so Laird's gone from the midfield, uh, is I have Laird sliding a little bit this year. Um, so the reasoning being is that you want to try and predict the trend. Now, if you have 12 teams like this and when they're doing a snake, so green, so, so as I expected, a lot of these 
captain options are going in that midfield. So if everyone's going midfielders, you don't have to jump on a midfielder because you know that they're probably going to be going elsewhere. They're going to start picking up forwards. They're going to start picking up defenders. I'd rather start a run. Now, no one else has gone to defender yet except for me, which is probably pretty good. Um, see, for instance, one, two, three, four, five mids have now gone. Do you want the 10th best midfielder or do you want the second best defender? Like that's the sort of thing I'm trying to think about where I'm looking where people are. So Zach Merritt's gone. And trying to predict that what's going to happen. That's where a lot of the highest averaging players are. So you do want to get some good mids in there. You need five mids compared to four in each position. That's the other thing I have tried to consider is actually looking at these positions and seeing what you're up against. So the rule number one, you have a look and you kind of see how many players are we picking. So it's four, five, one, four, four. So 18 people in a team. Tom Stewart, so another defender's finally gone. And I reckon some people will probably be thrown off by my defender ploy. Now, the other thing is forwards are extremely thin, so I don't mind trying to pick up a forward. I might even be able to. Another strategy is like picking up a Luke Jackson in the in the ruck line, for instance, knowing you can get a, uh, a, a forward later or put him in the forward line knowing that you're not as stressed for a ruck is another good strategy. So finally, another one of these ones coming back, Tom Stewart. Now, this is where some people have one mid and they will start to, where's Goulden? They're going to start then picking out some defenders and forwards. I'm surprised people aren't jumping on forwards a little earlier. I know they suck. That'll happen probably next round is what I expect. And that's probably because you want to still get some of these great value guys. They're still Dunkley. They're still Sarong. There's still Walsh that I'm kind of looking at the moment, Parrish, Anderson, LDU, Lockie Neal. There's quite a lot still there. So um, if I can get, say, a McRae, I think people kind of fade on him a little bit. Or even a Flanders. I know someone's probably going to jump on Flanders early as. But being first sucks, right? So Sinclair. So we've gone here. Now defender, defender. So I imagine all the other good defenders, so Houston, Young, Ridley, these guys I expect will leave in the next round because the forwards, again, suck. So you don't want to be too late jumping on forwards, I think, in any draft. Don't jump too early, though, that, LDU, right, that it's then an issue. So if you jump too early, then you're in this kind of weird position where you other people are going to have people averaging 20 points more. Forwards do drop off heaps quick, though, so it's going to be hard. I do want to secure something up. I don't mind Jackson for the sake that it then doesn't make me as desperate for a ruck because I can always just throw him in there later. And, oh, Dunkley. Yeah, good call. All right, all right, all right. Two, 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 Dunkley. I like that. He's probably one of my highly rated players. I'm a three away. So we've got Sicily gone. So Houston's available still. I don't know if I want a defender because I do need a captain. So I think Walsh and Sarong are probably my two. There's Parrish, there's Anderson, there's Lockie Neal. I don't mind like a Neal. McRae's gone. So there's the first forward. McRae is gone. Forward. I miss one. Dunkley mid. And I'm nearly there. So, oh, Sarong's gone. Forward. Sarong midfielder. And then a forward over here. All right, so we got Sarong. So forwards are going to go soon. So Flanders I am keen on, so I might actually pick up Flanders. Sarong's gone. Houston, Flanders. Sarong's gone, so probably Walsh is my next one. So Walsh, Flanders, Rosie. Good, okay, I'll take that. Where's Rosie, Rosie, Rosie? Oh, he's a while down for me, so that's another mid. All right, so it looks like a lot of the mids have gone. Now, again, if I leave someone like Walsh, someone's going to pick him up. Now, it really does drop off between, so you have Lockie Neal, yes. Oh, Walsh and Neal is a pretty good power pack combo. Or do I go for a Flanders? I need a forward, though. Let me go for the first one. Let me just start to filter for, say, let's say Walsh. Oh, where are we? Pick my player. How do I pick? Filter. Oh, come on. Did I get in in time? Oh, my gosh. That was painful. What the hell? Why couldn't I? I filtered it here, and I was just searching instead. Where the hell are all these players? Get rid of this. Piss off this filter. Right. Oh, and I'm back again. Right. Okay. So let's go with Flanders, I think. Flanders or Jackson? 
What are the average? 88 average. Oh, that's a bit of a jump, isn't it? Flanders or Jackson, Walsh or Neal. Flanders, Jackson, Flanders, Flanders. Who's next on my forward line? Flanders, I reckon he could push pretty high. More Jackson, Dusty. Oh, I might be able to get Dusty or Heaney or someone on the way back. How do you pass up Lockie Neal? I think you just probably need to. He's a little bit underdone, but let's let's just go. Neil, let's go. Neil and Walsh, two and two, one, two. Oh, the 60-second turnaround is pretty hard to kind of do sometimes. Let's go on Houston. That's what I expect. So I, I was able to go Neil and Walsh because I did go Dacos, which is probably, I think, the benefit there. So otherwise I would have gone um, – Bontempelli and Houston. I'm like, well, what I, I think I'd rather Dacos and Walsh. You know, that's the kind of flip that you get. But if I can get a like a Dusty and a, a someone, I might be keen to do that. It just depends on who's available. Tuke Miller, yeah, that's a good pick. People might start to pick a little bit differently now. So we'll see. Now there's a bit of a, a change that you will have to make. Anyone can draft the first three to five players. That's the easy part. It's, it's when you actually start to get past that. That people start making bad choices. Uh, Parish, good call. I do rate that. So it looks like Noah Anderson's probably next on my list. That short will be going shortly, as well as Young. Ridley, I probably also jump on, and she's or someone usually jumps on fairly early. So I do imagine by the time it comes, Whitfield, there you go. So I was about to say, people start to jump now a little bit more. Look, Jackson in forward. So that's a good call. So I'd make that call. Dusty, yeah. So here come the forwards. So, again, I don't mind that Dusty pick because I'd rather pick up a Dusty now than go a defender and come back and there's only 90 average or 80 averages forwards, and they all suck. Like, you might be able to pick up some cheaply. However, the forwards thin out so fast, it's ridiculous. All right, so there's four forwards gone, which makes sense. Brady Grundy, okay, so he's gone a ruck. I don't mind that at all. There's probably that, that extra ruck that was quite left that was actually decent enough. So there's still Wits, Darcy, Briggs that I don't mind. And there's still quite a little bit of value, even like Cherry or someone. Like for Team 2, the guy just before me, Hayden Young. So here we go. So this is where it comes from picking a little bit early. So Short will probably follow suit any minute now. Um, people selecting a little bit early, and I don't mind it. I'm here for it. There's a, there's a line between going early because for someone like Young, if you're picking him up, at 100 average, which you are at the moment because you're passing on short and you're getting young. So you're picking him up at 100. Now, if he averages 100, guess what? He's paid what you paid for. Like he's delivered what you paid for. So if you pick up a Hayden Young and he goes over 100, well, then you get some value. Generally, you're trying to kind of find the line between where they currently sit as far as average, where you think they will go. And then if you can pick them up slightly unders, then that's the value that you look for. Now, if a forward, so Dylan Moore obviously got glandular fever, Shy Bolton, I don't mind. Heaney, I don't mind coming back to the realm of possibilities. So, yeah, you can't spend too much time. Briggs is gone. Bolton's gone. That kind of ruins some of those plans. So now that Bolton's gone, you know, it makes it a little bit harder. Five picks away. So now it's, you know, Heaney, Kurnow, Jeremy Cameron, Toby Green, Fife, Adams, Dylan Moore. So they're not really great to be picking around 38 or pick 40, especially when there's some value there. Now, Jared Witts is still there. So I don't mind that if he kind of holds on. She's all they're starting to get a little bit creative. So defender... Go the she. So Short's still there. Ridley's still there. Patrick Cripps is still there. So I might even go, look, I don't mind, say, a Short, but I've already got a probably the best defender in the league. Okay, so he's now got one of each. All right, so this is easy for me. I'm going to go Cripps as a mid. I'm going to secure that one up. And then I'm going to go Jared Witts as the ruck because I think he's the last ruck left. So that's the value pick for me. So that way we kind of work our way up. So for me, that ruck line there with Witts, otherwise it's Nankervis, Goldie, O'Brien, McInerney, it starts to get a little bit thin. So that was a really good option for me. So now someone else is going Nane Curvis. Uh, Toby Green, so yeah, so I don't mind that. So this is where forwards are. And sometimes, depending on the pick you have, like if I was in the middle and I had the chance to get McCray at a better spot, then I probably would have. Flanders, you saw, I nearly went. But then how do you turn down, you know, Walsh and Neil? Um, crazy that I've got Dacos, Walsh, Cripps. I've got bloody... Three players from Carlton Collingwood. What is going on? I do have Lockie Neal. Again, bit of Brisbane bias. So I'm looking at that was, you know, I'm happy to do that because if you are going to watch them, you might as well actually enjoy them. Probably unless something really stands out. Do you know what I mean? I could probably pass and still try and pick up a midfielder later. So Charlie Kernow. 
All right, so if it does get back, I might pick up a Heaney or someone just for upside. Human Cluggage, good pick, good pick. Nick Martin. Okay, so he's one as that defender switch sort of possibility. So that's the other thing to consider is that if once you start to do, like get through some of these players, start to look at people that might get DPP later on. Heaney. And we'll try and get at least a semi-good forward. So I still think he's underrated. Um, consistent sort of player. Let me just check that there's not a, another better option. Now, sometimes you put one in like this and then someone stakes it. Oh, like that. They take it just like I thought would happen. Heaney is gone. So that then kind of puts you on the clock. It's now like Jezza Cameron Fife, Zorko Keys. That kind of rules that out. So defense, Kimmelberg, Kitty Coleman, et cetera. Yeah, it throws me in it a little bit. Sard, Brayshaw, Brayshaw, Coleman. And I've got two picks as well. So I'm going to probably use these 30 seconds. Go 14 seconds. All right. Himmelberg, Coleman, Kitty Coleman, probably Brayshaw. Dale, Brayshaw, Elliot Yo, Brayshaw, Brayshaw. Probably Brayshaw. In case, you know, with Oliver, there's probably a little bit of upside in there for Brayshaw. Has gone high 90s quite consistently before. I'll probably take that one before I go like a bit of a break here. Uh, even though he's not as high on my list. I do rate it, uh, so I have another one as well. So I do like the forwards. However, I might be able to get a double forward later before getting mid-value after that point, so I'm pretty strong in that sense. Coleman, Elliot Yo, Newman, Duncan. There's quite a few defenders there, Witherden, McGrath, so I don't really like them. Now, can I get a forward with some upside without going value? Or what's my mid-list like? Maybe I'll try and secure up one of these middies. Uh, mid, 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 mid. Mills, Wines, Viney, Crouch, Day, Parker, Brad Crouch, Hoppers, Hopper, 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 Tim Mitchell. Oh, crap. Viney. Oh, I had him in the bank too. So that's why you don't want to time out. Oh, you know what tripped me out then? That's so funny. Uh, Viney should do all right as well. Two Melbourne players. Um, I actually tried to hit Titch, which probably wasn't the best call. I probably should have just gone like a Wines. Um, so it threw me a little bit when obviously someone takes it out. And that's the minute issue that you kind of have. Um, wasn't really after that. You know, I could have gone someone else in that defensive line, but there is a lot of value there. So Viney, I don't mind. I think he is left field. I should be able to get some more mid value anyway on that bench that we have just to kind of cover it up a little bit. Um, so there's yeah, Hopper and a few others I am kind of interested in. And which I was going a little bit left field, looking for someone that has a high ceiling, you know, to support Dacos if you went out, someone with that high ceiling. And then I was looking for a Hawthorne jersey, like Guernsey, and it was a Collingwood player. So literally shows how how you can get put under the pump sometimes and not make every perfect decision. So here comes the defenders, which I sort of expect. The defenders and midfielders, I think, are gonna go. So Dale, Dale's gone. I think I saw Yo, Redman. Yeah, which is kind of what I thought. So that's why I was tempting that defensive line or even the double defense, you know, to be able to pick them up. But there's still some value there. Himmelberg, Coleman, et cetera. Yeah, so they're the ones that kind of top on that list at the moment. And it's good to kind of check what is top on their average list as well at this point. So, yeah, Saad, Blakey. Oh, Dangerfield's even some value there. What have I got him at? Oh, yeah, 92. Someone like Horn Francis could get forward status. Ollie Wines is gone. And that's the other thing I'll start to consider, are those that might actually get forward status. Um, Yeah, so that's the issue here. So I don't have any forwards. Heaney got taken right before me. I'll have to have a look at who's got that pick before me. And I was loving life. That was actually looking really good for me, picking up you know, Heaney, and a Brayshaw or, you know, two defenders there looks good. Instead, of Viney, I'm not as happy with, but you're usually going to make a mistake when it's only 60 seconds. Who else is there? Kitty Coleman. I'm just looking at defense and stuff quickly. Kitty Coleman's there. Duncan, Saad, Taylor, McGrath. Can I double down? Forwards, Zork, et cetera. You know what stuff? I'm just going to take these people off the board. You know why? Just to play a bit dirty, I think, is probably the way to go here. And let's see if Abdul will be super upset when I just then stack Hopper on my bench because I can. There you go. Enjoy. Enjoy, Abdul. He'll be so filthy, I reckon. So, again, midfield has the highest averaging. Forwards generally have the highest turnover. 
So I know it looks bad, but right. The part is is that there is value there. So you've got so Zorko Keys, Dixon, Bailey, Gresham, Tom Lynch, Harms, all people that have averaged over 80 previously and quite well previously in certain years. So this is the value part. Um Connor McDonald apparently training in defense um can of a half back role. So that's gonna be an interesting one. Mason Wood's just gone. So he's probably one I would look at as that defender kind of forward swing eventually. Uh, ben Ainsworth for Gold Coast apparently pushing further up the field, so he's someone that I could target. Cam Rayner did some midfield role, even though, you know, Neil and stuff weren't playing, but he's someone that could finally start pushing 80s. Stringer as well as the fittest he's been in years, so he could start to get back into that 80 mark. Um, Lob getting ruck time is another one that can pick up some extra average. Like when he gets ruck time, he averages closer towards 80, unlike the 69, uh, 67 that he received previously. Second year with the Dogs as well. English going more forward. Sard's gone. So they're the things that you're considering as far as value, and you don't always know the way it's going to do. I don't think I'm in this draft. Oh, I thought he was. Oh, no, it's Mora's Magic. Oh, that's why. Oh, right, that's that's some great competition then. Connor McDonald, someone just took Connor McDonald. See, I was just talking about him. Oh, and it's Mora's Magic. Right, oh, well played, well played. My bad. It's um, Mills I'll keep an eye on. I could just park him on the bench. Not that I need it. Guthrie's gone. Danger's another one that's left field. Forward possibility. Horn Francis gone. Holmes is another one that I would look at. But he might get defensive status. Um, Hawkins is gone. So, I, look, I might actually, if it does make it, I'll probably go uh, a Zorko. Now that Kitty Coleman's gone, so the Brisbane bias coming in. I reckon Zorka can get back up to that 85, 86 mark. I don't think he had the best season. Issue is, again, injury uh, Hogan. So, But when you're that thin, a guy that's averaged close to 100s previously, you know, 73% time on ground, I think he can get that right up to, I mean, averaging 83 off 73% time on ground, and he did have the injury issues last year. So I'm hoping Zorka gets a walk in four picks. Perryman, Barras, Butterick, Witherden, good. All right, so it looks like we're okay. So Andy McGrath still holding on. So I don't mind that actually as well. So like Andy McGrath and a Zorko might be the way to go. Uh, Duncan, I don't know if I rate as much. Andy McGrath surely for a number one has to start pushing up towards that 90. And I think I rate his upside a little bit more. So let's go Zorko just for the favoritism. Otherwise, Bailey, Gresham, Tom Lynch, they're still... So I don't mind Gresham. I could pick him up later, I reckon. Zach Bailey, 76. I reckon Cam Rayner as well. Yeah, I reckon there's enough value there to go somewhere else. Even Ashcroft is a sneaky. Part of it is, if you think someone has a high ceiling, would you rather play against them or kind of have them on your bench and then use them? So not only can you use them, you can use them as trade bait. If they're in form, you can put them on field. Do I trust that I'll still be able to pick up Maybe like a Cam Rayner or someone, one of those players later. I think I can. So who would you rather get a, a Rayner or someone now and then a, a worse mid on your bench later or a worse forward on your bench later? Or I'd rather just use the waiver if they're not working. So, or if someone drops them. So if this league was to play, which I'm not sure if it is, it's a mock draft, it says, but I'm like, well, they might play. All right, well, halfway through. Soldo, Norton. So yeah, people are making some loose calls here. So that's what I'm talking about with, Anyone can do well for the first three to five picks. It's once you get to this part, once you get here, that's where these spreadsheets come really in handy because then I'm going off my own ratings and it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not putting in like an 80.4, 80.5. I just cluster them around what I think. And then you can have a bit of a look. So Duncan's gone. You can have a bit of a look then and actually have a, a sense like I did just before. If anyone heard me, I was then tossing up. I was like, okay, so McGrath against this person, against this person, against this person. And I'm actually looking at the people above and below and then making a decision on the fly who I think is better and then just backing your gut. Now, it's never perfect because there's always injuries and other things that happen in draft, but I don't run off last year's averages to the full extent. So I'll use that and then I kind of say, okay, but then I'll put them into what I think they will average this year or around that mark. And then that's where you find your value. I don't pick them at a true average. It just then allows me to think, okay, well, will they make it back? Mills is gone. Okay, so there you go. Callum Mills, pick 134. 
that's decent. Uh, I probably would have gone there if I could have. So for me, it's Taylor against May, against Perryman, against Richards, against Barras, against Butterick, against Ash, against Williams, as far as picking a defender. So some of them might get eliminated between now and then. Yeah, Hannison apparently is black in defense for the first time. Clark, someone went way. Dangerfield. Okay, so there's danger. That's kind of what I was looking at. Jeremy Howe. So I have a lot sitting around that 80 mark in defense. And I think forwards are so thin that I could still pick up an 80 guy there, whereas a Bailey and a Keys. Keys, 80 average. is. Key, I think Keys is going to get moved on. they got so much talent now, Adelaide. I just think he's not going to get it. Ash is gone. Okay. So I think it's got to be probably Bailey for that, again, Brisbane bias. If I was to watch them, I think Bailey's a good enough one. I probably, I don't know. I think Rayner could overtake him, but Bailey's consistent enough. He's got that forward role. He'll stay forward. He should kick some goals. Hopefully Brisbane will still keep winning games. Um, and after his couple goals in the grand final, I mean, how do you turn him down? So make sure I don't choose Bailey Smith on that one. I always use your time too if it helps. I think just a bit. So I know it sucks for everyone, but... Sorry. All right, so 24 seconds. Stephen May with Brayshaw. Defense, I think Melbourne's got it sorted. McGovern's a high one, but injured a lot. Sam Taylor's killing it. You know what? Ooh, let's go with GWS, boy. Let's go. Sam Taylor. I've got him. Okay, I've, I've got him higher. Now, I know May's good for it with Lever and some other stuff going on. Um, I've got Sam Taylor averaging 90 to 92 this year. Um, so he had a bit of an off year. So he did show some glimpses. So I'm just going to go Sam Taylor. One key post. And then I'm hoping to be able to pick up a Butterick. And I think Gresham's also underrated. So I'd probably go Gresham as my next one. So Keys is gone. I reckon there's some risk there. And then just take the extra risk on the bench. So say like a Gresham. Gresham was so bad last year. Surely can't be bad again. Just need it out. And Gresham's someone that can go 85 to 90. So he's another one that I'm sort of looking at. So we'll see what kind of comes on the way back as far as the realm of possibilities. So that's fine. I'm okay with that. We're nearly there. Yeah. And there's still like some value in coming Salem. All right. Let's see what mids there are as well. Cause I reckon people are going to start loading up on bench. So let's see. Lipinski. Oh, Gresham's gone. Yeah. That makes sense. Can't blame him. He was never going to last. Was he? Gresham's gone. But let's see what we can get on the way back. Finlayson playing defense. Enjoy that one. Ainsworth, yeah, I like that pick. Good job. Jack Graham's my smoke as well from Richmond. Apparently doing really good stuff. Good preseason. Top three in triumph trials. A bit of value there. And then just gone. Hewitt, I believe, must be then gone. Johannesson gone. I just spoke about Johannesson, so that's good news. All right. Max Home as a possible defender. If he's a rebounding defender. That could be bloody good. I've got Ashcroft sitting there. Because he was averaging... Pretty good at some point, but coming off an ACL, I wouldn't really trust it. Hewitt, okay, so I did, and again, Hewitt, I just spoke about. I was like, surely he must be gone. Hewitt's gone, Atkins gone. They're next to on my list. Joe Simkin must be pretty much then on the brink. And then I have a look at the top of the list again. So Blake Akers, 88 average, no thanks. Still side bottom. I reckon side bottom could get forward status. I don't know if they need him on the wing. We'll see. I don't really like key forwards, but hey, look, let's make it work. Uh, sad admission, retirement admission. Still recovering from a broken foot. Oh, that's lucky. So that's no good for me. Uh, there's Tom Lynch there. So that's probably the best thing I'm going to do. Hope that Holmes gets DPP. Throw him into defense instead of Taylor. Could be the, the way to go. So now we're kind of looking at value, best selection. I think at this point, most people, because they are using the app, guaranteed, generally speaking. So Langford as a forward probably shouldn't last. He just went. There you go. So, yeah, talk of the devil. Makes sense. That's kind of what I was thinking of picking up, but probably should have gone Langford. More safe as far as injury. Not as much upside, though, I think, with, you know, Gresham and stuff coming in. Where's Langford going to play? Harry Mackay has done well previously. I don't like key forwards. Jack Graham, preseason, none in the year before that. So I reckon he might be the shake. I don't know how I've ended up with so many Richmond players. Jack Graham. Didn't play any real preseason. I'm just going to bank this here for now. A few left field ones here to finish out my side. I'm okay with at least one really weak forward. 
Let's see what kind of makes it back. So you have to do think a little bit outside the box. Butterick's still there. Barat, Sir Richards, Harry Perrin. Hey, no other thing's gone. Don't want him anyway. Luke McDonald hamstring still not good. Yeah, I don't need anyone from that defensive list really anymore. I'll have a look later. All right, we're kind of coming into the final round here. McGovern's gone. That makes sense. Jinby, that's a reach, but fair play. I'm going to get rid of Graham, I think. Stringer. Worth a shout, I think. Stringer's worth a shout. Everyone needs one flog on their team. Let me see if I can find Essendon real quick. Geelong, OCD, E. Manganine, Gresham. Langford said last week, blah, blah, blah. Gresham, one of those. For the full preseason. Damn, I wish I took Gresh now. Um... Yeah, look, that'll work. Let me just check out the any possible switches of position. So maybe if Sloan might make it all the way back, then he might be someone I throw in defense. But I got Holmes for that. Probably better upside. Um, so I'm pretty happy with my side. I don't really like key forwards, but when the forwards are that thin, key forwards, as you know, like Lynch, um, yeah, Hawkins and all those kind of types, they can bang out 90 to 100 average just because they have such a high ceiling. Lob's still there. Okay, so maybe I'll go... I don't, nothing's written there, and I swear I've got maybe some more rock opportunities. I probably will go Lob, uh, just because he can get that 80 average, and if he does get rock cover, then that will help provide flexibility in my team. Likely to return to rucking roll. Spoken about the potential, blah, 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 blah. That's probably the better upside, and then I can keep an eye on it. That's probably the smartest play for me. Forward, done. That way I might be able to then move off McKay um, and keep an eye out. I did hit forward. Thank you. Drafting. Thanks. All right. So that's done. Let me bring up my team and have a bit of a looky-loo, and we'll have a look through everyone else's team as well. Yeah, you know, Hopper or Mitchell or someone I could probably use as trade bait if someone starts to struggle in that midfield, I might be able to then pick up a forward and then use that sort of angle. Or, again, use see what happens if Stringer's not doesn't have the role or he's out, Lob can come in or McKay can come in, and then I can just use that and use the waiver. So that's kind of why I went for the couple of extra positions there. That's why I did choose lob, hopefully get ruck cover, but also the fact I'm not really attached to them, so I can keep an eye on them. If someone stands up, I can use that waiver to try and jump earlier than others, or if someone dumps a player who I think is worthy, then I can use that waiver to pick them up. But uh, Dacos is my main one, and because there is captains, I also want to make sure I had some of that midfield backup. So I do have Neil and Walsh that I can use as captain as well in my side, which is good. and. Um, Brayshaw, McGrath, Taylor. So Taylor's probably the weaker link out of that one. But again, I think he's impressing enough. He's a young descend, uh, defender that intercepts and backs himself in. So he improved at the back end of last year, I think. So he's someone I think can go 90, 92 maybe if he gets his form back. Um, Viney's probably the one I didn't want. But again, with Oliver a bit hit and miss, Viney's kind of like a Libertore. He can't really play much else. So he's sort of forced to be in there a little bit. Um, Cripps and Titch. So Cripps being the main other value pick there. Tom Mitchell, um, I'm waiting to see. I'm hoping, you know, time on ground goes up and that his form's up. So as in he changed clubs. It was bad sort of circumstances the year before that. So now I think he's someone that could really possibly flourish in that midfield mix because I still think they need him. So I think there's definitely scope for 100 or more. And then Hopper, I think, is probably the real undercard one there. So he can go, for me, 100 and to 105. So he's a value pick. Holmes, I picked for you know someone that could probably go 80, you know, six or more as a defender, hopefully. He's one I'm looking at possibly coming out of that halfback line. So he's one I'm looking to switch up there. Wits was again a value pick because he was the last ruck I actually valued at that point. Tapping down to an elite midfield. And I think he'll bounce back nicely. I also think he's got that he's tall. He's probably got one of the longest reaches. He can then use his strength and his experience to actually use the new ruck rule to really dominate and go back to that 115 sort of average. So I've got him up there. And then I went for just that value line. So as in Zorko, Bailey, guys who high ceiling can win your draft league. They might cost you some you know, points at some point, but I'm hoping the midfield will hold me in good stead to be really consistent. And then if Zorko scores, Bailey, Tom Lynch, McKay, like some of them can really throw some absolute spanners in the works for other people when they play you, because if they fire for that week, uh, it's going to be an issue. And the thing I do note is that, you know, McKay um, should hopefully score well being a Carlton boy and they should win a lot of games. The Lions, I still expect to win a lot of games, so they should be really competitive for that as well. 
Uh, Tom Lynch being the one because I don't know how how Richmond will go, but I do expect if they're not going well, he'll probably lead up the ground and try and clunk some marks and do a few other things. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. But again, another player who has averaged over 90 in the past. So that's my team there. Now let's go and compare them. So if we can have a look. Okay. We might just have to do it this way. Uh, so in defense, he's got Whitfield. So this is Fizz. Whitfield, I rate. Andrews, Clark, I think are probably unders. Himmelberg, not too bad. Luke McDonald on the bench um, coming back off a, was it a hamstring tendon injury? So not too bad. I think that's probably fairly weak across some of that spots there. Laird, Libertore, McCluggy, Jackins, Bailey, Scott. Nash and Bruin. So again, I rate my midfield more than that. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Riley O'Brien. Look, if he's still number one, Ruck, sure. I get about 95 sort of average. Daniel Green, Cameron, Ainsworth, Pickett. So again, started fairly strong with the Daniel Green, Cameron, and then Ainsworth, Pickett, a couple of you know questionables. Houston, Blakey, Witherden, Miller, Salem. So again, started off fairly strong with Houston, Blakey, Witherden, Miller, Salem, questionables. Yeah. Midfield looks probably one of the weakest, I think. Not bad, but like Rosie, Kelly, Crouch, Simpkin, Guthrie, side bottom, row bottom. Um, English being the strongest. Heaney, Langford, Adams, Sexton. So I think this person here, so Evan jumped early, probably too early, it seems, because when you jump too early all the time, you kind of end up looking a little bit thin. Uh, so he was one that got Heaney just before me. So English, again, started off great. English. Yeah, Houston, Rosie, possibly a Port fan. And then ended up a little bit thin. Um, Angela, joints. Um, okay, I, I I like this. This one looks pretty good. All right, so Wilkie, yeah, look not great. But Young, Johannesson, Coleman, Butterick. So there's some real upside there. Golden Green, Brad Crouch, Dugowie, Sanders, Henry. It started to fall off here. So the tail. So I think it started well, but like Joint said, maybe um, the hopes went up in a bit of a puff of smoke. Uh, Cherry good with Jackson there. So I don't mind that. Cherry there with Jackson there. Kernow, Norton, Harms, Finley, Darcy. So Okay, so not too bad. Fell off again at the end a little bit with Darcy and a few others. I just got pig mentality hitting me up here. Auto pick Sam Walsh. That was a bit of fun. Did you record your commentary for it? Uh, no, no auto pick. Oh, uh, I had him. I had him. I had him banked anyway. It turns out I just didn't hit the send button. So that's fine. I did get one auto pick. So look, yeah, wheels fell off a little bit here for me. So McCray, uh, Finley McRae, Darcy, a few questionables, you know, and with Henry, Sanders, etc. So I expect some of these players will get dumped out. Um, Hardwick's playing forward, so I don't like that one. Short, Powell, Yo. Bose, Defender, okay, I don't mind that. Oliver, Dunkley, Chera, Parker, Lazaro, again, questionable on the back end of it. Flynn, Reeves as bench, uh, okay, questionable, but sure. Myers, Schiltz, Rayner, Graham, Fisher. Okay, so I don't mind this side. So Fisher's got upside into defense, and then you could probably move Hardwick out into the forward line or off your side. Um, some good picks. So, again, this is someone who did take. So who's this one? Jason. Thrill Ho did take some of my picks. So I was looking at Yo. Uh, short, we kind of called that one coming through. Dunkley was the one that I was definitely looking at and then went you know, similar to where I wanted. So this is, uh, I think, quite a good side outside of you know some of those fringe players. But Graham I looked at, as you know, Rainer I looked at. Um, so, yeah, don't mind that side at all. Patches Potato. So Max the Patch. Stuart Ridley, Rioli, Maynard, Brody. So I do like this one up until, say, Rioli, Maynard, sure, questionable, but that's fair enough. Stuart Ridley, Rioli, really strong. Merritt, Canelio, Kelly, Amon, Setterfield, Callahan. It started to fall off a little bit. Oh, Mills. So I do like this one. Merritt, Canelio, Kelly. Amon's probably hoping for defense, so Maynard could probably leave and Brody could leave there. So if that was my strategy, I'd probably go Maynard. I would have left Brody Smith for someone else and maybe looked at some more midfield depth or somewhere else. Callahan, possible. Setterfield, so a few speculatives here. Soldo, as the ruck, is probably one of the weaker lines, but Soldo, I'd rate, could go 90-95, so I think that's still good value. And this is someone who did go a little bit earlier on the forward. So Martin and Hawkins, so a little bit stronger-ish. But again, so it was in consistency sort of where you're looking at. So not a bad side. Um but I think there are a few positions there where you might lose five to 10 points. Um, 
yeah, just by trying to make those selections. So pig mentalities. Here we go. Piggy, I'll just you just sent me a message, mate. I'm just reviewing your side. Peasel Richards Hinge. Uh, I think it's probably the weakest one for you, but anyway. Um Ash, Iden. Okay, not too bad. Um LDU, let's go. So decent midfield, except for oh geez, a couple of sketchies. So LDU Parish, I like. Doherty, I like. Wood, I think's questionable. Acres questionable. Sheed is definitely questionable. Rowan is strong as bench. Goldie, I don't mind that. Um, just it gives you that coverage. You might use it as trade bait. I don't think Goldie will get forward status because he will start Ruck, I believe. Uh, Dylan Moore, I like it. Dixon, possibly some foot issues still. Finlayson, I think, is playing key defense, so he might drop. Hogan and Billings, I like. So actually... Props to you outside of Hinge, Wood, Acres, Sheed, and, you know, it's not bad. I actually quite like that side. So I think that's probably one of the better ones for me. Um, and, again, that's just my preference. It's not actually saying someone's bad. I'm just putting it out my thoughts on how I would have selected it. Ryan, Redmond, Weedering, Zach Williams, Weller. So good, Weller coming back. Um, Weedering, I think, is injured. Zach Williams coming back from injury. But, again, high upside. So I think Wayne's picked up some value there, and he's gone for the risk-reward. I think he went a little early in Trelaw here, but Petrarca, Trelaw, Raul, really solid three there. I like that. Warple, I think, is a bit, you know, weak or whimsical, up and down. Crisp, I don't mind, but he's sort of been tailoring off. I think there's still value there for him and very consistent. Watson, Nick Watson, I think that's probably the one of the weakest selections I've seen so far. I mean, like it's like Charlie Kernow. I mean, not Charlie Kernow, Charlie Cameron, a small forward, like a green, playing that forward line, that pressure forward. Yes, has goal sense, but for a first year player, um, with that they compared to like you know, Eddie Betts and Toby Green, etc. They don't light the world up on fire straight away. So I wouldn't be picking him in a draft league. It's not a like a Harley Reid or a Sheasel or those early picks that sort of find and accumulate the ball in a positive role. That's a forward. And Hawks need a forward, don't get me wrong, but I just don't think it's super coach really worthy just yet. Thanks, a good pick coming back in there and picked up the Darcy Cameron. So I, think, I like that double pairing. Um, McRae, Walker, Keys, Reed, and Bradley Hill. I think that's a very strong forward line. So I think this is actually a really good side. Um, some upside there, some risk, obviously, to go with that upside. The big thing for me is obviously the Walpole Watson kind of thing, but you could trade your way out of that. And, yeah, I think that's probably one of the strongest ones that we'll come up against for that. Newman, Vlosten, Dale, Hunt, so May. So outside of Hunt, I like that one. Bont, Sarong, awesome too. So, and then you have a look, Dacos, Blycarves, McKercha, Hobbs, Aish. Uh, again, picking rookies, just because they're spoken about for supercoach relevancy and making cash doesn't mean that they're a good player for draft. So I could be wrong. Darcy Flanders. And then a couple of questionable. So, look, this one, again, had a, a strong frame, and then I think there's a few holes that my team could exploit um, if we're in a matchup. Moore, Duncan, Duggan, Wangany, Miller, Windhager I like as a left field, but I don't know if you'll get there. Duggan, yes. Wangany, Miller, yes. Duncan, yes. Moore, okay, that's not too bad. Dawson, Brayshaw, Anderson, Horn Francis might get a forward status. Wardlaw, Ashcroft, Ward. So this just gone pure upside. Uh, outside of, say, McKenzie, maybe, and Tezias, I like this. It's risk-reward. Humphrey, Rochelle, just gone. All the young people looking for a breakout. So same as Ward. Ward, Ashcroft, hopefully to come back halfway through. Breakout in Wardlaw. Breakout in Horn Francis. It's kind of like, hey, who's up and coming? Um, Windhager. I'm just going to pick them all. Um this is something that could work out, but you're kind of trying to pick, you know, eight breakouts, maybe two or three will really fruition. The rest might actually be pretty good. So this is a, a danger side as far as someone that could cause you a headache, um, but still quite decent. My team, Dacos, Brayshaw, McGrath, Sam Taylor, probably the weaker one out of that. But again, I think he's still got that 90 scope in him. Neil, Walsh, Viney, Cripps, Tom Mitchell, Holmes, Hopper, Wits, Zorko, Zach Bailey, Stringer, Lynch, McKay, and Lobb. So, again, trying to, because the forwards were thin, I tried to kind of double down with a couple on the bench just to give myself a little bit more coverage, knowing that I'm probably going to flip them over if they're not good. So 
So I tried to go with people I know I wanted to keep in other positions and then roll a couple extra of those forwards around just in case I need to sort of re-roll them. Um, Adrian, it's a drizzle for shizzle. Sinclair, Lloyd, Sud, Quainer, How. I don't mind IQ and How. You know, hoping probably one of them fires off. Butters, Taranto, Warner, Will Day, Pendles, Jinby, McEnany. So Jinby, I think, speculative. Bolton, Rankin, Lipinski, Filippo, Zerhaus. I think, yeah, fell off at the end here. Rankin, some upside there. Lipinski, Filippo, so kind of a little bit of a stretch. So I think there's probably about four, maybe five kind of weaker selections there with a couple of injuries, but gone the older route. And you can see the different strategies. Someone's gone the old breakout, some gone the old heads. So outside of getting injured more possibly for the older players, they are more likely to start switching up different positions and might get that 35% threshold. So that's an interesting one. Uh, here we go. Selby, more is magic. Sicily, Cox, Rivers, McGovern, Newcomb. So McGovern, okay, McGovern I like. Sicily, yes. Rivers, yes. I don't like Brent Cox, but that's just me. He must rate him highly. I don't. Um, so I think that one's not that great, but that's just my opinion. And I do rate your work. Um, Newcomb. So, oh, first one, Newcomb Steel. Okay, so gone quite early in some of the value areas. And I think the research is great, but it's about when to pull that trigger. So Newcomb is your first mid Steel. Now, I know Steel probably came first. So Steel, Newcomb, Martin I rate. Hewitt has some upside to get back up there. Taron Thomas, wait for those 18 weeks. Maybe a nice loophole for you there. Ollie Wines, Nick Martin to go to defense. So I think that's, look, it's okay. Uh, I'd probably rather my sort of midfield with, you know, Neil and Walsh and the rest of them. But interesting. Uh, okay, so Durham on the bench. Max Gorn. Okay, good ruck. Got Briggs on the bench. Wow. Okay, so there's some real value there. Now he could use to look to use that as a bit of an exploiting option. If um, if any of your teams actually have the it's like a wild card sort of position on your field. You can just start with an extra ruck and then put them in that wild card spot. If anyone's seen that, Baker Caldwell, McDonald's. I do like Connor McDonald. We spoke about Gresham. I, I was talking about he stole him. So Baker, he took off me. McDonald, he took when I kind of wanted to. Gresham, he took when I wanted to. Um, yeah, and McGovern, I was kind of looking at. So he did pick a few of my players, and that is it. So look, I think. Let me know what you think in the comments. And I know this has been probably a little bit long-winded to finish, but it's also good to just go back and reflect. It's now been, oh, wow, a long, 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 long time. So maybe just go and have a check it out. Um, let me know what you think on how my team went versus everyone else. What surprised you the most? Did someone jump out? Did someone really surprise you with, you know, where they went in the draft? What do you, what do you think about for strategy? What did you think so far about, you know, having the – the different spreadsheets, as you can see, per position, crossing them off is a nice way to go. And then, again, using that trade tracker. It's hard when you only have a minute. But, again, I went through and you start trying to tick off where people are going, especially initially to try and pick some of those high averaging players because, once again, you don't want to be getting the 10th highest midfielder when you can get the second best forward or the second best defender. So don't chase your tail. Try and be proactive, and I use that to predict and to try and get ahead of the curb, of the curve. So that way I can try and pick a forward, and then all of a sudden I've get the second best forward instead of the 10th best mid, and then next minute everyone starts going, oh, I need a forward, and then the forwards go drop, 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 all the forwards, and then when it comes back, I can still pick up a midfielder that's maybe only two or three spots behind where I was going to. That's what I mean with that sort of scenario. If you do want a draft uh, spreadsheet, so Azza has been compiling it all, um, I shortened it just for the purpose of this, but pretty much you have, I put mine into positions, defenders, forwards, mids, rucks. So that way I can kind of go top of my list for that position without having to filter. And then usually I'll have different things like comments, time on ground average, and then my predictions. So you can kind of see there's some notes uh, sort of here on some of these players that I'm looking at. Sometimes I'll have a highlighter, but I was using, obviously it put the kids to bed. So I came straight up, straight on, and it was a little bit unprepared. And I haven't even gone through putting in all my stats yet. So I use this as a, a bit of an update for me and some knowledge for when I have my main draft this weekend coming. Um, but that's it. SC Insider 100, like us, follow us. One hour 50. I've got to put this up on the line. Um, yeah, if you stayed through it and you wanted to just check it out, enjoy. All right, bye.